Welcome to Gene Canvas TV. You made it to episode 581. You got Dank here and... That's a measure. <laughs> oh, and we're here with some uh, interesting news items. And I want to make some announcements first. Our friends at the uh, down in Roseburg, the Umpqua Hemp Fest is coming up. And don't forget now, it's July 3rd. That's this Saturday. Uh, and uh, uh, I think it's something like 20 bucks admission. Very reasonable. And definitely support these people. It's their first year. Uh, they actually are a kind of, I guess you'd call it, uh, I don't know what you call it. Anyway, they're co-working with the Seattle Hemp Fest. So they, they are now, Emcall Hemp Fest is an official licensed hemp fest. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, but again, good people. And the uh, Willamette Valley Normal Chapter, our local chapter, is a sponsor uh, for their hemp fest. And uh, uh, they offered us a booth down there, and we'll have a booth at our hemp fest for them too. So we, we did just like we used to with Seattle Hemp Fest. We trade booths, spaces. But anyway, so that's coming up July 3rd, and I, please uh, help be there and, and support these people. And the other thing I want to talk about is uh, our friend Kathy Ging told me about this, and so asked me to talk about it, so I'm going to bring it up real quick here. This is, uh, this is about the OMRI, which is the Organic Materials Review Institute. It's an international nonprofit organization that determines which input products are allowed for use in organic production and processing. OMRI listed products are allowed for use in certified organic operations under the USDA National Organic Program. The OMRI Canada, Can Canada program also lists products for use under the Canadian organic standards. OMRI's funding comes from a variety of sources, etc., etc. So. If you're really into the organic thing, this is who you want to get in contact with. Uh, they have a professional staff of 32 that run the organization's various programs and administration out of right here in Eugene. The uh, OMRI staff is governed by a board of directors, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, and they have uh, three lists. They have the OMRI product list. Uh, it's the most comprehensive directory of products for uh, organic production or processing. They have the OMRI Generic Materials List. It's an, is an authoritative catalog of over 900 materials and their statuses in organic production, processing, and handling under the USDA National Organic Program. The OMRI Canadian Products List is a list of all products that ORMI has determined are allowed, either allowed or allowed with restrictions under the Canada Organic Regime Standards. So if you're into the organic thing, uh, I just want to put that out there, and that's right here in Eugene. So uh, that's, a, that's the thing about Eugene. We have a very diversified definitely, uh, definitely. Uh, population. So and then a story that caught my eye was, uh, and it came out of the Gazette Times, and uh, this is just came out today. Uh, or no, yeah, today. And uh, pol policing pot, Corvallis police train on new city ordinances ahead of July 1st. This is written by Nathan Brittell. The Corvallis Police Department is paying close attention to the latest decisions on recreational marijuana and hoping that enforcing local laws will be anything but hazy. Starting Wednesday, July 1st, Oregonians 21 and older will be able to possess up to one ounce of marijuana in public, up to eight ounces at home, and grow up to four plants per household. In 2014, the Corvallis Police Department handed out 32 citations for possession of less than one ounce of marijuana to those over 21, an act that is no longer illegal under Measure 91. In anticipation of the state statute going into effect, the city of Corvallis revised its own city ordinances to align with Measure 91 and passed an additional seven ordinances regarding marijuana. While the new ordinances largely mirror the state statute, the state legislature could make revisions to the law through the end of the legislative session. It's been changing almost weekly as it's gone through the legislature, said Corvallis Police Chief John Sassaman. I think we are prepared for July 1, but we're going to go through training daily and we will have more training to, be, uh, to do be, to be ready. The city of Albany is, talking, is taking the wait and see approach on recreational marijuana ordinances. The Albany City Council has not adopted any ordinances related to Measure 91, but it did adopt Ordinance 5843 and Resolution 6361 on October 22, 2014, 
which establishes a tax on the sale of marijuana and marijuana-infused products. <clears throat> the 10% tax would be levied on sales of recreational marijuana only. In November, the Albany City Council adopted Ordinance Number 5844, which limits locations of recreational marijuana sales outlets to the same zoning as dispensaries. We're waiting to see where things end up with the OLCC, said Marilyn Smith, Albany's Public Information Officer. The council gave it considerable discussion, but when they decided that we might as well wait and see what we end up with before making that decision. New laws in Corvallis. Under the new city ordinances, those under 21 who possess marijuana will receive a violation and a fine of $650. Possessing marijuana in a public place or growing marijuana in public view will be a Class B violation. Providing marijuana to those under 21, attempting to sell marijuana, or hosting a party where marijuana is being used <laughs> will be a Class A misdemeanor that carries a minimum $500 fine. The introduction of new laws typically carries some confusion, said Lieutenant Cord Wood of the Corvallis Police Department. To help residents understand how law enforcement will handle the new ordinances, Wood said it might be helpful for Corvallis residents to consider laws regarding alcohol. It's as much of a mirror with alcohol as you have with marijuana, he said, with the exception of being able to drink in bars and restaurants. For the public, the new marijuana ordinances are not much different from our approach to alcohol. You can't walk down the street drinking a beer, and you, don't walk, and you can't walk down the street using marijuana. You can't give beer to anyone under 21, and you can't give marijuana to anyone under 21. There it is. <clears throat> Corvallis police have taken part in multiple training sessions over the past few months to prepare for July 1st. The Sassaman or the, uh, and the chief said police are aware that it will take both police and residents some time before the laws are fully understood. To that end, Sassaman said, police have been instructed to pay attention to the most flagrant violators of the laws. We're not going to be heavy-handed about it. We know people really aren't paying so, too, so much attention to the law and enforcement. But those who are intentionally violating and being flagrant about it will, will be firmer and firmer, firmer and firmer with it as we adapt to the new laws. Sassaman added that the department likely will lean heavily on its two drug recognition experts and DREs in Benton and Lynn counties. I think most law enforcement agencies are probably behind the curve on being able to deal with it. We're fortunate in the Valley that we share these resources. Sassaman has hesitated to speculate on how residents will act to the new laws, but he's remaining optimistic. What we know is that the state of Oregon legalized these, a substance that can alter the minds and impair the, the abilities to residents. So we'll be paying a lot of attention to that, he said. We'll have to see how everything plays out in the coming months. We don't want to pass judgment. We'll be taking a careful approach. Todd Delato is a horticulture expert who owns Can Counsel uh, Consulting, which provides marijuana with the which provides marijuana ed education and expertise to public safety and businesses. He thinks the Corvallis Police Department has taken the right approach to preparing for Measure 91. <clears throat> I think they're well prepared, Delato said. Chief Sassman has been very with, communicative with the entire community. We've met regularly over the last few years. The police department is working to make sure the public knows how law enforcement is handling this. The Joint House and Senate Committee approved SB 460 on Thursday that would allow uh, Oregonians over 21 to purchase up to one quarter ounce of recreational marijuana at existing medical marijuana dispensaries starting October 1st, with the Oregon Liquor Control Commission planning to implement a sales taxation system starting 2016, any recreational sales made prior to January would be untaxed. Dallal said he anticipates that without the option for purchasing marijuana through legal and legitimate means, it's likely the black market will see an influx of sales prior to October. Over the next three months, the illegal market of marijuana will see its most profitable three months in history, he said. Demand is the highest it ever has been or will be, and the supply, because selling isn't legal, will remain low. Are we going to want people to purchase marijuana from a safe, licensed, and regulated dispensary that lab tests for contaminants and potency? Or do we want all these people to go to drug dealers? What, cho what choice are we giving them? 
voted to approve Measure 91 in November, in part with the stated purpose to, quote, eliminate the problems caused by the prohibition and uncontrolled manufacture, delivery, and possession of marijuana within this state, unquote, and, quote, to protect the safety, welfare, health, and peace of the people of this state by prioritizing the state's limited law enforcement resources in the most effective, consistent, and rational way, unquote. Uh, Delato doubts the first three months of Measure 91 will accomplish those goals. He said, a lot more people are going to be buying and, I can't, and, it, and if they can't get them legally, they might buy it illegally. And that is, what, that is the opposite of, goal of Measure 91. It's something the Corvallis Police Department and law enforcement agencies around the state are going to have to decide if they're going to de uh, dedicate resources to prevent. Sassaman said the department will remain vigilant in regard to the black market, but he's optimistic the new laws will remain clearer and provide law enforcement with more resources over time. The reality is there are a lot more controls now than there, uh, than there have been. There is a lot more coming into play, he said. The structure behind it appears healthy for this market, and I very much expect that in time even legal businesses will come together and work with us to tackle the black market environment. There's going to be a legal market and there's going to be a black market. I think we're preparing to deal with that. So that's how one city is uh, dealing with the legalization and upcoming, uh, they call it legalization, by the way, and it's not really legalization. It's further decriminalization yeah, because right. we're still talking about jail and fines and everything else if you don't comply to the new law. So uh, but, let's be clear, that's not really legalization. As a matter but of, I'll take it. <laughs> but as a matter of fact, I have some friends that are 18, 19, you know, just like within that range, and they drink a lot, you know, and when they're not able to get can, they don't go out to a dealer. They just have friends that have cannabis cards and their friends go to the dispensaries <coughs> and get it for them. So it's not like we're not <coughs> helping out the black market right now because there's a lot of people with cannabis cards that will I know, but that, but, but that makes it, the, but that turns into the black market. <laughs> true. And so, no, it's true. And it's interesting that nobody's talking about that. And it's really the most obvious source between now and when the store and they actually start selling at retail right. is you got a friend with a card and it doesn't have to be a patient it could be a caregiver yeah uh, and if they got a card you know and uh, even so a grower if they know how to do it right no you know, not no. a grower a grower can't go into dispensaries that's one of the things they change right for the real how, how, how are growers supposed to go and get the get the uh, i don't know that's one of the stupid things everything. about it is a grower can't go into dispensary and pick up the clones you know that's, that's what the caregiver is for <laughs> I guess so. So, yeah so uh but anyway uh that's probably what's going to happen i don't know what else i mean uh, and they say you can't sell it you only give it to people you know well first of all if, if you'd have to have an awful lot of it and donation and, and contribution <laughs> So anyway, uh, interesting, at least we're there, or here, you know, so it's a great step in the right direction. Uh, so in future shows, we'll be talking about where we really well, need to be and how we hope to get there, but uh, anyway. How, how are the flowers supposed to be delivered to the place, to the dispensaries and collectives that the grower can't deliver? Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, we're coming up to the break, and so we're going to ah. take a break here, and we'll be back with the separate ep second episode, uh, second half of the episode of 581. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Grandpa's got glaucoma, now he's on the witness stand Cause he lives in Oklahoma, where medical use is banned He tried some marijuana, doctor said he wouldn't tell But that doc turned Grandpa in, now he's in this prison cell Should've gone to normal, that's N-O-R-M-L Normal.org, right from your deal They fight the marijuana laws, both federal and state Just enter in your email, they'll keep you up to date Welcome back to the second half of episode 581, Eugene Cannabis TV show, and got a quick correction from an earlier statement on the first half. I mis mentioned that the Eugene Hemp Fest was on July 3rd. Roseburg, Roseburg. You, sa you said Eugene. Oh, thank you. I messed that up too. I'm called Hemp Fest in <laughs> Roseburg is on July 3rd, which is a Friday. Uh, and uh, I said Saturday, but excuse me, it's uh, July 3rd, which is on a Friday. But it is a camping event, so I, I think that people are still going to be there over the weekend, I think. I'm not, I'm not sure how that works. But uh, anyway, definitely check it out and uh, support those great people down there. And also, uh, we wanted to bring up the uh, our producer brought to our attention. I'd forgotten. I didn't even think of it. But uh, this episode will be actually airing on July 1st. 
So that's kind of neat that the uh, Eugene Cannabis TV show 581 will be aired, will be uh, hit the public waves on uh, July 1st, the day of legal, cannabis. legalization takes effect in Oregon. So anyway, that, that, that's, pretty, that's, that's pretty neat. And even though we call it legalization, as I keep saying, it's not really legalization because the last story we were doing, we're talking about the different kind of fines that can be levied. So if there's any kind of le fines or things that can be levied against it, then that doesn't really sound like it's all completely illegal. So what I'm looking for is legality or like the uh, control on pot cannabis like they have on tomatoes. That's, that's my goal. And uh, corn. And by the way, before I get into the story, I wanted to talk about, uh, you wanted to talk about an experience you had with Eugene Mission. This is a local thing, so listen up. Yeah, I was over there at the Eugene Mission one night and to go over there and have a, uh, have a meal. And uh, when, I ro when I cruised up in my minivan, I did a U-turn and parked to the side. And when, when uh, they thought I was doing U-turns and, and, and uh, cookies and peeling out and the women were like all spread out in the middle of the road and the women's mission this has happened over there at the Eugene mission like four weeks ago but we had guests and everything and one week we were off so anyway two men came out of the mission thinking they owned the road and I was just there to have a meal one walked up to me like a regular style the other one walked up to me like with his hand on his side like he's going to start something really put some one made me wonder what he was going to do so then uh, he uh, he asked me if he told me that they got a call on the that the women told them that I was speeding down there and everything and I wasn't and he walked up to my car and I asked he asked me and I if I if I'd talked to the police about it I said why do I need to talk to the police <laughs> when I was just there to have a meal and he goes well in order to come in to have a meal you got to have a UA and I went why do I got to give you a UA to go have a meal, you know? And, you know, they, they just think they own the street and everything. And he goes, well, in order for anybody to come into the mission, I have the right to ask if you can give a UA or not. And I just think that's just a downright invasion of privacy and this just to go in and have a meal because they, you, they, they stereotype you, you know? That's just wrong. Yeah, that's horrible. I UAs, uh, the only people that benefit from urine, urine analysis <laughs> is people that produce a test. Yeah. That's the only people that benefit or profit from that whole thing, you know. Uh, and the interesting thing is, I'm hoping at some point they'll be phased out uh, because, first of all, I always like to say is that a drug test is an intelligence test. <laughs> you got to be stupid to get caught. That's the first thing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and. <laughs> Secondly, uh, you got to look at the drug you're looking at or looking for, you know, and we all know that, uh, you know, where as pot stays in your system for up to 30 days, especially if you're a heavy user, uh, and that can make a big difference. Uh, or, you know, cocaine where you can, uh, you know, uh, right. have a blast and a day or two later you're clean again. So, and it just isn't fair, you know. And I, by the way, years ago when I was driving a truck, there was a trade magazine that had an article on different different illegal drugs and it, and it had and one of the columns they had was uh uh symptoms symptoms of, of uh -oh. people on that drug you know uh -oh. and it was funny because the one symptom that was on it was uh connected to every one of those drugs they had listed was paranoia <coughs> that drug caused paranoia you know and i used to i laugh at it because i thought how could you know, how stupid can you be when you're thinking it's, of course it's paranoid, it's against the law. Right. You can't do you the know? drug, it's against <laughs> the law. Hello. <laughs> but anyway, that's prejudices. Can of bigotry is uh, what we call it in the cannabis circles. Can yeah. of bigotry. And believe me, it's running rapid in Salem right now. So. And, and, and it's like ever since that happened, even when I'm like really starving on the weekends because it's hard to find a meal on the weekends and everything, I'm afraid to go over there because I'm afraid I might be... Uh, be confronted by the same two men when I need a meal, you know. So if they have people like that over there, that, that's just horrible. That's got to be a low life blankety blank to be able to walk around and tell people they need to take a UA. Yeah, you know, you know I mean, God, you know. Ta talk to the police or give a UA. If you don't do neither one, you can't eat that's, here. That's funny. That's no, it's not funny. <laughs> I mean, it, well, it's so ridiculous. It's funny. Anyway, speaking of which, let me tell you this story. This is another little maddening thing that this gets kind of right along with it, more or less. Uh, 
This was uh, <coughs> dated uh, June 19th and written by uh -huh. Danielle Damn Vitale uh, O'Brien. And uh, uh, oh yeah, she's with the Human Solution International. So she's telling about a, an incident that happened here in Hillsboro, Oregon. <laughs> On April 16, 2015, Tim uh, Tim Hembry was entrapped by an undercover police officer masquerading as an Oregon medical marijuana card holder and subsequently arrested. Humbry's friend, whom he had just met, identified himself as Tyler and had been texting with a man named Brian Ashcroft, who claimed to be a OMMP patient and was asking for some help attaining medicine. Brian was actually Officer Bertrand with the HPD, Hillsborough really? Police Department. Brian asked to meet Tyler and Hembry at a thriftway that happened to be within 1,000 feet of a school. Tyler and Humbry were unaware of the school as it was not visible from the parking lot. Upon meeting, Tyler completed the ex transaction and accepted a $140 donation in exchange for what police say was 13.2 grams Ooh. of BHO, uh, weight included the packaging. At no point during this interaction uh, did Hembry directly accept money or handle the BHO. As Hembry and Tyler were walking away, they were stopped and searched by two TriMet officers. The $140 that had been exchanged during the transaction was found on Hembry and handed over to Officer Bertrand. Tyler had given the money to her, uh, let's see, Tyler had given the money to Hembry to repay a debt. Officer Bertrand had photocopied the money prior to the meeting with Tyler and Hembry and verified uh, it as being the same money. Hembry was then arrested, held on $50,000 bail, and charged with three felonies. Unlawful delivery, unlawful delivery within a thousand feet of a school, and unlawful possession. Despite the fact that, the two, that two people cannot be charged with delivery of the same substance, or that it was not Hembry that delivered said substance, the charges remain. Hembry, Hembry has uh, been in the Washington County Jail since his arrest. Hembry plans on going to a jury trial, despite his public defender's attempt to get him a, to accept a deal. Because of the lack of confidence he has in his public defender, Tim is searching for an attorney who will represent his interests pro bono. Please contact media at, uh, well, get a hold of Dank Bagman and I'll give you the, the, uh, the email address if you can help with this person. Instead of uh, trying to read out email addresses, is this as bad as handwriting email addresses? They don't work half the time. So, uh, Hembry was a, has a discovery hearing on June 22nd, 2015, at 1:30 p.m. to 1:30 p.m. So that already happened at Washington County Court. Uh, blah 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 blah. So uh, and uh, yeah, they're looking for support for this poor guy. And uh, you go to the website, visit the Human Solution International at uh, thsintl.org. That happened to me here 10 years ago, right here in Eugene, the same mm -hmm. exact same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And th and, they, and it was thrown out, so it, it was... Uh, yeah. Anyway, this is the Human Solution International. So if you can help these folks, uh, help this person. Uh, like she says here, no one should go to jail for a plan. That pretty yeah. well sums it up. And, uh, I, and I've been in that county jail, Washington County. It's actually a d decent jail compared uh, to some of them I've been to. I don't yeah. think he'll be in there that long after that hearing that just happened. He might yeah, be I out would, by I now. Hope, yeah, I hope not. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's like our friend uh, Bobby Sixtro says, if we're going to make a plant illegal, let's make a plant that's illegal, Hemlock. that's kind of nasty and something that we all could poison agree oak. on, like poison oak. Poison ivy. Poison ivy, yeah. So Hemlock, you know. I get mean, jail time if you have to find, if somebody finds you have poison oak or poison ivy. Yeah, on your you're property. itching all over your place and you go to jail because you got poison oak and poison ivy. He's banging the table. Oh, I apologize. So anyway, let me, uh, this is a quick story from the, uh, uh, mine went like Medford. Medford Mail Tri Tribune, written by Damien Mann, is on June 21st. The pot paradigm, paradigm. what you can and can't do once pot becomes legal on July 1st. It's an Independence Day will come early for those who are going into plan to celebrate history when recreational marijuana becomes legal July 1st. But for others, pot remains a mystery that's been shrouded in a veil of legality, illag, 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 illegality, there I got it out, since 1937 when Congress passed a Marijuana Tax Act that effectively banned its use and sale. 
the just say no generation that grew up with the propaganda movie Reefer Madness will have to adjust to a new reality that anyone 21 or older can smoke, grow, or share pot with friends as long as it's done in private. At 12.01 a.m. July 1st, Oregonians can start growing marijuana in their backyards as long as they don't exceed four plants per household, keep their, cop, their crop concealed from passerby passer and pay attention to local ordinances. If they sell their marijuana or take it across state lines, even to Washington, where it's also legal, they'll be breaking the law. The biggest hurdle for anyone who wants to smoke legally July 1st is obtaining pot because it won't be for sale in any store. But accepting it from someone as a gift is legal, giving new meaning to the Beatles refrain, I get high with a little help from my friends. There it is. <laughs> the do's and don'ts of pot still are being worked out by state legislatures and other officials grappling with a uh, myriad of proposed changes to ballot measure 91. The legalization initiative of voters passed overwhelming, overwhelmingly last November. Rome wasn't built today, says Bree Markley, owner of Bree's Botanicals, a marijuana, marijuana dispensary with locations in Gold Hill and Ashland. As the pillars of prohibition fall, the citizens of Oregon will see a phased rollout of marijuana legalization. So that's it. It's coming. Uh, I say it's coming. Uh, when you see this, it'll be here, July 1st, legalization. After being working on it for 20 years, uh, it's, uh, it's about time. Uh, as, a good, as a colleague of mine said, and he put it so well, he said, wow, legalization doesn't look anything like I thought it would. <laughs> this is a great point. So anyway, uh, we're going to get out of here and hope you'll come by next week. And uh, uh, we're always looking for guests. So come on down behind Sheldon High School, the community TV studios, Monday nights, 730. Come on by. You can visit, be on the show, or even help out. So thanks for, uh, thanks for watching us this evening. We'll see you next time. Be legal.